Welcome. So now we've learned of three different conservation laws as well as what we've had before then, our forces approach. These are what we call frameworks, ways in which to look at how to solve physics problems. And one of the big questions that we want to answer in this video is how to choose which of these to use in a given problem, right? If you're on your exam and you are given a problem and it's no longer a homework problem that says this is a forces problem, this is a momentum problem, this is an angular momentum problem, what do you do? So we're going to have a start. And up at this start, what we want you to do is we want you to do all the steps that you normally do when you're approaching a physics problem. We want you to sketch the problem, right, in a before and an after state. If something is not changing, we just have to do, write a normal state. And then we also want to do, write an interaction diagram. And we want to define our whole system. So once we've started, then we're going to start asking ourselves questions that's going to help us understand which of these to use. So the first question we're going to look at is we're going to look at our interaction diagram. This is going to inform everything else. We're going to ask, are all the forces constant? So we are going to use a decision diamond kind of thing from computer science. So we are going from this start and then asking this. So if we can say yes, that all our forces are constant, then we want to use forces, right? And after we've done, in order to help us use forces, right, we want to then ask once we've written these, right, we want to find the acceleration constraints, and right, uh, we have to write um, a second law for each object in our system. So if we write an interaction diagram in which we have two objects in our system, we would need to write Newton's second law once for each object in the system. If our forces aren't constant, then of course, right, we might say no. And then our next question we want to ask is, are all external forces zero? If we can write an interaction diagram, if we can define a system in which we don't have any external forces, or that the internal forces are so, so much larger than the external forces that we can use the impulse approximation to say they're right, in, inconsiderate, or not really needed. We have this maybe up here. So if we can say that the external forces are zero, yes, then we go into the conservation of translational momentum. And we're allowed to have this thing. So in order to help us here, right, we want to th think of the constraints for, right, are either, right, told to us or inside the collision type. So if we then have to answer, right, our external force is zero, if we can say, have to say no to this, then we want to ask the same question for the torques. So if we say no to this, right, so if we can say yes to the external torques being zero, then we have conservation of angular momentum. And so, right, we still have then that our collision type gives us a constraint. And a reminder for this that, right, axles, things that we pivot on or that we rotate through, provide external forces.
but no external torque. So we can still, of course, say no to this, and then we want to ask our all forces represented by a potential energy. So if we have gravity, if we have spring force, if we have normal force, things like that, these have potential energies. If some of our forces do not have potential energies like friction, drag, things like that, then we might not be able to say the conservation of energy, but we can still say yes here. As we keep asking this, right, for translational and angular momentum, we might also be conserving energy. So, right, we can keep going through and keep asking, but this is kind of a nice, right, system to think about. So, when we have this conservation of energy, right, each object in system, has a kinetic energy to track. And then each interaction inside the system or through our system has a potential energy. So that's what we have for, right, conservation of energy. What happens, crazy enough, if we have to say no here? If we have to say no here, then what we have to do is we have to, right, make more simplifying assumptions. Maybe we change our interaction diagram, change what's defined as our system, whether, right, forces or torques are external. And if that's the case, then we go back to the start and we continue this all over again. So this is a good way to determine, right, which framework we want to look at at any given time.